Hello and welcome to today's Fandemonium. I'm Joe Lorendi. Of course, we got big news going on, but first off, happy St. Patrick's Day to all those who are with me right now and not out there boozing. I appreciate it. Uh, that comes later tonight, but we have some big news that we need to talk about first before we can all go and enjoy our St. Patrick's Day. That is, of course, the New York Jets moving up to number three in the draft this afternoon. Big things happening that definitely affect the Buffalo Bills. So before we get into that, let's talk about the trade and what took place. So the Jets move from number six to number three. They get the third overall pick. The Colts get the sixth pick, two second rounds in 2018, and one second round in 2019. So they had to give up a lot just to move up three spots. From six to number three, a lot of haul just to move up three spots to uh, to number three. So what does this mean? Where do we go from here? One thing, if you are hopeful, I saw panic mode question mark on there. Uh, no, not yet, because as good of a trade and as aggressive as this was for the New York Jets, one little minor detail, there's still number two out there. And the New York Giants sitting there. Are they going to trade it? Are they not going to trade it? I'm not exactly sure. We'll have to find out. But I think I think at least a quarterback will go there at number two. If it's not the Giants, it probably will be the Bills. So we're going to talk about how do the Bills get up to number three. That's going to be interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens there. But just talking from a Jets and Colts standpoint, I definitely get this as the, at the as the Jets. Uh, plan A was Kirk Cousins. That didn't work out. Kirk Cousins is in Minnesota. That's when, when I saw that Kirk Cousins was going to, going to Minnesota, I thought, oh no, that means there's Denver still there who's looking for a quarterback in the draft. There's New York who's still looking for a quarterback in the draft. That's going, you know, that is, affects the Bills, no doubt. So, their plan A didn't work. Now it's on to plan B for the Jets, and that's going to get their quarterback of the future. So, with that being said, Jets are at number three. Enough talk about them. How does this affect the Bills? What do they have to do now to move up in the draft? So there's two two things we got to look at here. First off is, is the... Uh, is today's move absolutely is a way of what the Bills are going to have to get up, even have to give up. That's just three spots. They're going to have to move up 10 spots. Secondly, let's look at another one where a team went up uh, pretty high in the draft, two number two overall. I talked about this last week's show, but we'll bring it up again because it is so noteworthy. Eagles and Browns trade that when the Eagles traded up for Carson Wentz. What was in that deal? What did it include? Because the Eagles went up six spots to number two and drafted Carson Wentz. So this is what the Eagles gave up to the Browns to get that number two pick two years ago. They gave up the eighth pick, obviously, and they gave up the next year's first round. Then uh, the second round in this year's draft, so this was two years ago, and a third and a fourth in 2016. So in total, they gave up five draft picks and the Browns gave up the number two and a fourth round pick. That was a big haul, and that was only to move up six spots in the draft, whereas in the Bills have to go even further than that, moving up from 10, uh, up 10 spots to 12 to number two if they want to go that route. So with those two presidents in place, this is what the Giants are going to be looking at and seeing, okay, what can we do? Can we get more than what the than uh, than what the Jets got from the Colts? Obviously, they're going to have to do that. Uh, they're going to have to give up a lot more than what the Jets had to give up to the Colts. So this is the history that it's been. If you, so, if you want to look at what they're going to have to give up, it is Eagles. It is Eagles and Browns. Eight to number two was definitely uh, a big part of of what's going to take place in this year's draft. So. Let's talk about what do the Bills actually have to do to move up in this draft. How much are they going to have to give out? Feel free to put in the comments what you think the Bills are going to have to put up. It's going to be interesting. So, 
this is what I have of at least a starting point, and we can go from there and see if this is right, if the Bills are going to have to give up more. But let's just stay right now with the picks themselves. We'll talk about players in a little bit. The hot topic is should we trade Shady or not. I'll give you my opinion on that a little bit later in the show. But let's just stick with the draft picks and seeing what we would have to give up moving forward. In my opinion, this is just the starting point. It could even get worse than this. So to move up from number 12 to number 2 in this year's draft with the Giants. Bills, definitely both first-round picks this year. So that would be number 12 and number 22. Possibly next year's first-round pick. We'll leave that out on the table. Uh, probably, probably both seconds and a third. So I'm going with both first this year, both seconds this year, possibly a third, and then maybe the Bills would try to do future years just so not everything's taken from one year's draft. But it's going to have to be that much. I could see them having to give up three first-round picks, obviously the two from this year and uh, the one from next year. If you think the Bills are going to be able to move up that far uh, without at least giving up two or three first-round picks, you're out of your mind. That's how much they're going to have to give up, and then some. And at least one second, if not two seconds, maybe a third. We'll go from there. It's going to be a big haul. I'm seeing a couple people put on here, you know, yeah, both both first, both seconds, and a third. I mean, that's that's right. The Eagles had to give up. I guess they in net they gave up four picks to move up from eight to number two. So I'm definitely expecting at least five uh, five five picks uh, overall to uh, to move up with the Giants. And the Giants are sitting in a great position, in my opinion. They know the Bills need a quarterback. They hold all the leverage. Worst case scenario, they stay at two and they get their man. If not, uh, if not, they're going to get a haul of draft picks. I would be extremely happy if I were a Giants fan today. That's it's going to be a ton to move up into that position, and you got to prepare yourself instead of throwing out. All right, let's go up to two. What are we going to do? You got to sit here and you got to look at: Is it worth giving up the farm as we like to throw out to move all the way up to get the quarterback? Well, what that depends on, obviously, is who are the Browns going to draft at number one? That's the big question, and obviously, we probably won't know that until draft night. Who the Browns are going to select at first overall? Uh, let's say let's say it's Josh Rosen. Say the Browns go Josh Rosen overall, and that is uh, and that's who Brandon Bean wants. Well, then obviously you're not going to give up all, all that stuff in order to move up to number two. If that's if that was your guy and he's going to be gone, then there's there, then this is a mute point. There's no reason of even talking about it. So that needs to be stated right there. It all really depends on who the Browns are going to draft. And uh, maybe he knows that information. Maybe he doesn't. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, But here's here's one thing I do want to bring up. I see a lot of people saying stay at number 12, which actually surprises me. Usually it's the fans who want to move up and be aggressive and go get the quarterback that you want for the future. Whereas in this one, everyone wants to keep the picks. uh, And we're seeing Brandon Bean move up in the draft to try to go get that future quarterback. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I feel like right now they're just trying to process the bills, trying to process what just happened. Uh, did the Jets make a good trade? Did they not make a good trade? It really calls into question, who are the Jets going to pick? Who do they want with third overall? Uh, cause I feel like if you're going to make a move like this, if you're in New York, you have to be certain you're going to get your quarterback. And that's what kind of scares me about doing this a little early if I'm a Jets fan. Because there's still two more picks before the Jets. How do you know your quarterback's going to be there? How do you not know the Bills are going to move up and get the guy that you just wanted? Usually that's why you save this stuff for draft night, not exactly do it before. So it's interesting. It's an interesting move by the Jets. Will they be able to actually get the guy that they traded up to number three to get? That's a question we're probably never going to know the answer to. Even after draft night, they will never say anything about that. So it's, it, it, we'll see. We'll see what happens. 
Will the Bills move up to number two? I just want, again, my thing, at le- uh, both first rounds this year, two seconds uh, this year, and a third, and maybe those are sprinkled out over the next couple years. We'll see what happens. But uh, without a doubt, it's going to have to be two to three first round picks over the next, let's say, one to two years. And then uh, probably two seconds and maybe throw in a third. So five to six picks. Be ready for to give up a lot if you're going to move up that far. Uh, with that all being said, it's been a crazy day. No doubt about it. Uh, I, I, my sense is Bills fans are, are nervous. Uh, not really sure what to make of what happened today. We're going to try to figure that all out. What do we do? Where do we, where do we go from here? Uh, if you're the Buffalo Bills. But what I, the other thing I want to bring into is I see a lot of people are saying stay at number 12, which isn't the worst idea in the world. Just hear me out. If you're all on the bandwagon of we're moving up, we're going to get our quarterback of the future. It doesn't matter what it takes. Just chill for one second and hear me out on what the draft order looks like, how many teams possibly could go and get a quarterback, and what it might be available at number 12. So let's start off right now. Let's say no more other trades happen, and this is the draft order, which I don't think is exactly it's going to be. I think at least the Bills probably will move up, or somebody's going to make a move. But as of right now, this is the draft order. And number one, you got Cleveland Browns, obviously, and I think with the Jets... Moving up today absolutely solidifies that they're going quarterback number one overall. I thought people thought, oh, maybe they'll go with Barkley uh, at number one and then maybe get the quarterback at number four. Well, not anymore with the Jets there at number three. You want your first pick at at a quarterback. They're going to stay at uh, they're going to pick a quarterback at number one. No doubt about it now. So right there, one quarterback gone with the Browns. Uh, number two, the Giants. They've been interesting. Let's say the Giants stay. Bills don't make a trade to move up with them. Uh, they, Gettleman, they've said that they might stick, Eli might stick around another year or two there in New York. I actually believe that. I think they would be better off going with somebody like Barkley, uh, at adding depth somewhere on their roster. I don't think they're going to go quarterback. I think some of you might disagree with that, but I'm, going to firmly hold that they are going to stay uh, and not pick a quarterback at number two if they do stay at number at number two. So number three, the Jets, obviously they're going to go quarterback. So with, uh, so right there, you have two, at least two quarterbacks going within the first three picks, possibly even three. So number four, the Browns, they're not going to go quarterback since they picked the quarterback first overall. Five, the Broncos. Interesting with Case Keenum there, Paxton Lynch. What does John Alway think? Does he think that Paxton Lynch uh, might be still might be able to find something with him? Is Case Keenum for the next couple years? The Broncos are a huge question mark at number five. I can see him go either way. I think right now with the probability, they're probably going to stick go pick with a quarterback. But who knows? It's a question mark of where the Broncos go at number five. Six, the Colts, they're not going to go quarterback. And here starts this part of the draft where there will be no quarterbacks selected. So you have six with the Colts, seven with the Buccaneers. They have Jameis Winston there, and they're not picking a quarterback. Number eight, the Chicago Bears. They have Mitchell Trubisky there. They're not going quarterback. Number nine, San Francisco 49ers. They have Jimmy Garoppolo. They're not going quarterback. At number 10, the Oakland Raiders. They have Derek Carr. They're not going quarterback. So that is five straight picks where there will be no quarterbacks selected. None. Um, and, I, and I'm seeing uh, Colts might get QB. Luck is hurt. I don't think just yet. I don't think they've given up on Andrew Luck just yet in order to pick a quarterback at number six, maybe later in the draft, but not right now. I I think they'd be crazy to go with the number six overall pick and get a quarterback. So right there, there are five straight teams who will not be picking a quarterback. Let's go with number 11, the Miami Dolphins. Another question mark, kind of like the Broncos. I think the probability for Dolphins is they don't pick a quarterback. Tannenhill will be back this season. I think they're going to give him another chance to be the starter there and have one healthy season to show if he can take the next step and become an elite passer 
in the NFL. Uh, but I know some people might think differently than that. But a nice, but a nice little question mark there. And then, of course, number 12, you have the Buffalo Bills. So with that all being said, with the way I said it right now, absolute, pro- absolute, yes, they're picking quarterbacks. You have the Browns and the Jets. There's two. Uh, question marks right next to their name. And number two, the Giants. At number five, the Broncos. And at number 11, the Dolphins. So that's only five teams, in my opinion, that have a possibility of picking a quarterback before the Bills. And I, I that's absolute maximum. I would be shocked if all of them ended up picking a quarterback. That seems a little much. So let's say only three of them pick quarterbacks. Is that what the Bills want? Uh, I, it seems like there's a top five of, of quarterbacks this year. You have Darnold, you have Allen, you have Lamar Jackson, you have Rosen, and you have Baker Mayfield. Those have been the five that have been talked about as the upper enchilant of quarterbacks in this year's draft. Uh, with the way I put it, that put the Bills right at the tail end of that. Uh, if, let's say, everyone who's questionable to even take a quarterback were to take one, which I don't think is going to happen, uh, that put the Bills right at the end there, uh, possibly missing out on one or just having being stuck with the last one that is available. Not what you exactly would want if you're the Buffalo Bills. Uh, so what, what do we do from here now that, now that this has been settled? Five teams who are questionable to take quarterback before the Bills. What do you do? What do you, what do you do, uh, from here? Is it worth going up to number two? Is it worth waiting till draft night to see what happens and then maybe playing the field from there? That's going to be an interesting question to see uh, what happens. Obviously, Brandon Bean uh, has given us absolutely nothing to work with uh, per usual. Him and Sean McDermott are media uh, gurus. They're almost like politicians. Uh, they just they don't give you anything to work with. They can they can go around any question that the media asks. Uh, and, and of course, Brandon Bean said, "Well, I mean, there's a possibility we move up, but you know, we're also content with staying at number twelve. I uh, just pretty much said we can do whatever in the draft, and didn't answer the question there. But with that being said." I still think the Bills are going to at least try to move up. Expect to hear rumors of them trying to move up. The question is, when does that take place? When do the Bills try to move up to number two? Do you wait till draft night? Do you wait till a week before the draft? Do you do it right now since the Jets just did it? Um, I feel like the asking price, it's all about how much you have to pay. I feel like right now the asking price is ridiculously high. Um to move up to number two. Uh, but that's what you have to pay to move up to a position like that. Could on draft night, let's say the Giants, I bet the Giants are feeling real good about themselves at this moment, thinking they could probably get a huge haul for a team trying to move up to number two. What if you just wait till draft night? See what happens. Maybe, who knows, maybe there's a, maybe the Browns do something stupid. It's the Browns. I like making draft deals on draft nights for when that team is on the clock so then you know who is available and who you can take. Right now, the Jets gave up a ton of picks in order to move up to number three, and they don't know who's going to be there when they select. How can how can you just sit there and, and do that and not have the confidence of who's going to be on the board? Are you going to be able to get your guy? I'm a big draft night kind of deal type of person. If you're going to trade up, know who you're trading up to get. And that's what scares me about right now. Are the Bills uh, going to be quick in order to move up to number two? If they're going to move up to number two, uh, you just, you just need to be, to be careful uh, if you're the Bills and make sure if you move up, you can get your guy. Absolutely. There, there, there is no doubt about that. So, one other thing I would like to get into too, and I've been hearing a lot about it, is uh, let's take away, let's say a possible player that could be thrown into the deal, and one that I've at least been seeing a lot on the Buffalo Fanatics page, uh, all over. People love to talk about it. Is possibly trading uh, Shady McCoy 
in this deal to move up to number two. Now, it's an interesting argument. Is it going to happen? Probably not, but it's definitely a possibility. So let's go with from both sides. I'll, I'll, I'll go my unbiased opinion just when presenting the arguments right now. So let's say let's say the Giants, who are a running back needy team right now, uh, wanted to get out of that pick and could get a running back that helped them in the helped them over the next couple of years get a little bit better because this Giants team, no doubt, and, and Gettleman has said it, and if you listen to what they have said as a team, they've talked about how. They've talked about how they thought they disappointed last year, that they were a lot better than what ended up taking place on the field. And Gettleman, they almost feel like they're coming in to trying to write off the demons that have happened last season and turn it around and be, uh, and be better. And they, cause they think they can be a good team. Uh, it seems like a long time ago, but this Giants team was picked by a lot of people to go to the playoffs and be a solid contender. Obviously, vastly, uh, disappointed in that regard, but, uh, you know, will be, it'll be interesting. And I'm seeing the Giants just sign Jonathan Stewart, uh, as we all know on here. I mean, come on. I mean, yes, Jonathan Stewart, great, but it's the Sean McCoy. But moving on from that, uh, could it be a possible move? I mean, absolutely. Uh, thir- you know, 29, 30 year old running back only might have a year or two left. Uh, We'll see what happens, but it's a definitely a possibility if you're planning for your future, trading away your best player right now who's getting up there in age might not be possibly the worst or the, the, the move that they might look to make. But on the flip side of that, and this is where I stand on the shady being traded to move up to number two stance that people just keep on talking about. I'm almost, I'm in the firm camp of I don't think it's a good idea. Shady McCoy, who had 1,500 yards uh, between receiving and rushing last year, was the Bills' offense last year. Without him, we may not have scored any points. That's how brutal we were on offense last year. Uh, Shady was this team. I'm willing, like an like an like an old car with, that has a lot of mileage. Let's let's just run this thing until it stops. Let's just keep. Just keep on running with it. And uh, I think it's got a couple more years left the, the, left in Shady. Nothing last year showed that he was slowing down. Uh, I think, you know, we just, we, we get to that age of 30 with running backs and we want to say, let's just get rid of them. They're going to be done soon. And you know what? Most of the time that might be right, but Shady's a different type of running back. Uh, until he shows signs of declining, I just don't understand why everybody's so eager to get rid of him. If you can get a young quarterback and keep shady and have an improved defense, uh, this team all of a sudden starts to look pretty good. And I just don't understand, but you take shady out of that, you have a rookie quarterback, and it's just going to be a mess of a season. Now, I know this is all part of the process. And maybe having a, a down season next year in order to be better in the future might be a good idea for for the Bills. But I just I, I just don't under I just don't understand how you can trade away your best player for a young rookie quarterback who you know draft picks don't always hit. They just don't just because you move up into the top five doesn't mean that this person is automatically going to be a star. And I think that needs to be said time and time again. Just because you're not, just because you move up in the draft to go get a quarterback doesn't mean that that player is automatically a star and going to be the future of your franchise for 10 years. That's surely what you hope is going to happen. And that's honestly what should happen. But does it always happen? No, it doesn't. So you need to be careful of who you're giving away and who you're trading away. And the other reason, uh, I mean, I guess one reason kind of why it would make sense so you could save draft picks and get depth. Uh, you know, at offensive line and in other places, because uh, we got the, the Bills have a ton of holes. There's, there's no denying it. Uh, they need, they have to put a lot of people in place uh, moving forward and to see where they're going to go. But I, I just, I don't understand why we are talking about 
possibly having Shady in this trade. It doesn't make any sense to me really whatsoever. A man who had 1,500 yards, who was your offense last season, and you're going to trade him away to, to move up in the draft doesn't make all that much sense to me. Stick with your draft picks. Also, what doesn't also hit are all your draft picks either. Uh, there's always a lot of busts too. So yes, it is a lot to give up. And, that, and that's one thing I feel like people always sit there and they think about is, uh, oh, that was a lot of draft. They gave up a lot of draft picks. And yes, draft picks are very, very valuable. We saw that today with the Jets and the Colts trade. But they don't always hit either. Go look back at the at the last uh, five years of Bills drafts. Go look at them. It's qu it actually it's quite the nightmare. So uh, just I'm forewarning you. Uh, it's not the greatest thing you'll ever see. Uh, but what you find out is these players they come for a couple years and then they leave. They aren't the star players that you thought they were going to be. It's a real awakening experience when you go back and look at old draft and see. Uh, what is happening, who they picked previously, and where and how they ended up in their careers. Draft picks don't hit as much as people think they do, uh, especially for the Buffalo Bills. Now, I know we have a new general manager in there, but just go take a look and see, and you think, huh, maybe draft picks don't hit as much as I once previously thought when you go back and look at all those different drafts and looking at the players who turn out to be pro bowlers and uh, starters for their team. It doesn't happen as much as one would think. So with wrapping up here on Fandemonium, let's just do a quick recap of what we talked about today. Of course, the Jets make a, uh, a deal with the Colts. Uh, this is big news for the Bills. Uh, obviously, they gave up their first round pick, this number six pick, two second rounds this year and one second round next year. Uh, so if the Bills are going to want to have to move up from 12 to 2, uh, they're going to have to give up a whole lot more than that. A whole lot more than that. Be ready, Bills fans, to give up the farm. If that's what you have to give up to just move up three spots in the NFL draft, just imagine how much it's going to take to move up 10 spots. It's going to be a haul for them. A haul. Uh, are they going to do it? Are they not going to do it? I don't know. I'm not sure. In my opinion, I think they're going to try their best. I, th I even feel like well, might, we might hear Adam Schefter report saying Bills are in contact uh, with the Giants for the second overall pick. Uh, but I'm not exactly sure what they're going to end up doing. Uh, I, in my opinion... I think they'll find a way to move up to number two. I feel like we have a different regime here in Buffalo than previous past. Most would stay. Most would be complacent. Uh, but I feel like Brandon Bean will find a way to move up to number two and go get the quarterback that they want. So uh, interesting, interesting thing that took place today for the Bills and the Jets. We'll see. But I don't expect a trade to happen until draft night. That's what I personally want. So you know you're getting who you want. So with that being said, that's all I have today. Wrapping up a tad bit early here. Enjoy your St. Patrick's Day and enjoy March Madness. How about those UB Bulls getting a big, big upset over Arizona? I had Arizona in my Final Four. So I, I had, to, uh, yeah, that was a bad pick, and I apologize for that one, obviously. But uh, horns up, go Bulls tonight, and uh, enjoy your weekend. That's all we have for Fandemonium today. I'm Joe Lorendi.